Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brandon Hilgeman from ProPreacher.com and today I want to share with you my Logos 8 Sermon Workflow. You can download the workflow at the link below this video if you're interested, but I just wanted to show it to you real quick. Well, if you saw my review of Logos 8, one of the things I was most excited about was the new workflow feature, which allows you to create templates to kind of help you work through different systems of things you do over and over and over again. For example, when you're writing a sermon, there are certain steps that you do every single time and certain things you don't want to forget. Well, in my book, Preaching Nuts and Bolts, I introduced my seven step sermon prep method and I created a workflow in Logos 8 going through each of those seven steps. So let's check it out and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here we are in the home page of Logos 8. If you're not familiar with the new workflows, the way you get to them is you go to guides up on the top and then your workflows are down here. What I've done is I've created a sermon prep workflow. If I click on that, what it does is it opens up my sermon prep workflow right there, boom. And I can just pick whatever passage of scripture it is that I want to preach from. So let's just say I'm doing a message from Philippians chapter two, verse three through 11. Bonus points if you know that off the top of your head. And then here's my workflow. Here's my seven steps. Pray, study, focus, illustrate, outline, edit, practice. So it pops right up and kind of walks you through the seven steps. Step one, pray, get on your knees before God. So we pray, okay? Say we sit down, we pray, we're done with that, we hit continue. Then it moves on to the next step, study. And look, it says one of seven steps done. A little green check mark to let you know you're done, that feels good. And here it says study, so you pick the text you're gonna preach, you're gonna read it. The text is right here, you can click more. It'll show you the whole passage. So there is your whole passage that you're gonna be preaching. You can read through it, you can study it right here. Underneath the workflow, you can click on compare Bible versions and it'll bring up some of the Bible versions you would like to compare it to and then you can get a little bit more in detail there. Right here, you can take all your notes as you're observing. So whatever it is that you're seeing, do nothing selfishly. Whatever it is, the notes you get as you're studying. After you've studied the passage, if you wanna bust into your commentaries. Your commentaries then are all listed right below. So I can click on any of these. Just click on this one. And right there is my commentary and I can study the passage further in depth, get some scholarly advice. Down here we have important passages. So there's other passages that relate to the theme of Philippians 2, 3 through 11. So you got Isaiah 45, 23. So you got all these passages that relate that you might want to pull into your sermon to support your main text. That's pretty awesome. And then down here, we have cross references also. So say we did that, we got all of our notes, we have studied the text, we've become an expert, hit continue. Step three, focus. So here it's going to walk you through finding your big idea. An awesome thing about it is that right here is a theme section. It automatically brings up for you. So it tells you the theme of your passage of scripture. So here's the passage of humility. Um, or about obedience to God. And there's actually sermon starter guides if you wanna get some inspiration or some ideas. So say we're gonna preach on church unity. You can click that sermon starter guide and you've got all these different things that Logos will automatically bring up for you. So this will walk you through the big idea. It'll help you see, so you summarize the text in your own words. You can write your summary there. You refine the text, narrowing the summary to the core idea. And then you narrow that core idea down into a memorable sentence. And that's how you find the big idea. Once you do that, you hit continue. We're on step four, illustrate, gather some stories. So here you can list all of your illustration ideas. Once you've listed all of your illustration ideas, then you can pick your top ones down here. So write the ones you're actually gonna keep. And if you need some ideas, here's all the logos illustrations that might relate to what you're looking at. Here's a media collection of different videos that they have or different um, media resources down here for images. So say we got all the illustrations, we know what we're gonna be using. Now we go to step five, outline. So you're gonna take the scripture, the notes, the big ideas, the illustrations and everything, you're gonna piece it together in a final manuscript or outline. The cool thing about Logos is they also have a sermon editor. So if you wanna use that, here's a button right here, just create sermon document and it automatically creates a sermon document right here for you. You can just get right into start creating your sermon. You can go back and copy and paste the illustrations or your notes from studying or the big idea that you've got in your focus all right in there. Pretty sweet. If you need help with sermon outlines, don't necessarily recommend it, but there are some sermon outlines 
uh, here. Don't copy these, don't steal these, but these are some ideas that you can look at how other pastors have preached these sermons and get some ideas and inspiration there if you need it, if you get stuck. All right, so we've written our sermon, hit continue, then you go to your edit phase. So it's just encouraging you to walk away and then when you're ready, go back and refine it. And then right here, you don't have to go back to the outline section. Right here, you can just say you've walked away, you've closed all your stuff out. Right here, you can click open and it'll reopen up the sermon that we created earlier and it's all saved right there for you. When you're done, hit continue. Step seven, practice. This is just encouraging you to internalize and rehearse your message. And once again, if you've closed out your sermon or if you need to come back to your computer and access it again, you just click right there and your document for that sermon will be right there. So there you have it, quick and easy. Let me know what you think. I hope you find it helpful. And until next time, keep on preaching.